people get on the uh, exciting stuff anyway, I think. So, uh, first up is SIT Graduate Institute's very own Associate Professor Rylan White. She's been teaching here since 1993, I believe, with uh, train design and the TDL classes here. And so, her presentation is The Garbage and the Rose, a little mysterious title, so again, tell us more about what that's about. Thank you. I do agree with you, that was a good save. <laughs> good training skill. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank um, Alex, Karen, and the, and the team, the whole team, for continuing on with TEDx. I, I think it's a wonderful thing to do. I wore my TEDx shirt from last year. It was a great, uh, it was a great group. Uh, did, did the same thing, and um, I'm very happy to be a part of it, so thank you for inviting me. Um, when I asked Alice what he wanted me to talk, can you hear me okay? When I asked Alice what he wanted me to talk about in 20 minutes, he said, well, if you could talk about the tenets of training, and maybe the, the times you had the greatest movement in your career, and then maybe something about a call to action. <laughs> so that I can do it then. So, uh, feel free to like pull me off when my twenty minutes is up. Um, I thought I would start by saying uh, a little bit about who I am, um, what I do, and um, how I fell into this work. Uh, I do teach the training for a lot of the training courses here, training design and experiential learning, training for social action. Um, uh, there is, a, has been a training of trainers, kind of advanced seminar kind of class. Um, I teach a dismantling disability class, uh, which is a really fascinating class to do. And, um, and if I think about how I fell into training, um, I was in the field, and I lived quite a bit of my life um, overseas, and I kind of fell into training. It was something that I started doing, uh, and I loved it, and I never studied it. I just did it, like many of you who I'm looking at faces who have fallen into training in the same way. Um, some, some things about me, I mean, my identities, you know, that have influenced the kind of training I want to do and do. Um, I'm white. I'm temporarily able-bodied. As I get older, that is shifting around a little bit. Um, I uh, am a military brat. I grew up traveling and I kept traveling. I didn't settle down and put any roots down until I came to Vermont in 93, uh, back to Vermont. I will say that uh, one of the biggest influences is that I was a student here in 1982 and uh, did the program. At the time I got a, uh, a master's in international administration with a focus in training. Uh, it was a little different than it is now. Um, another influence is that I'm Southern and if you're so, those of you who are Southern, if you, you know, it doesn't matter what you do, you're Southern. You know, it's kind of a love-hate relationship that I have going on in the South. Uh, but I am Southern. I've been, I have been influenced by the South. It affects my work, um, as does being a military brat. And one of the things that has affected me, kind of a combination of them both, in the 60s I was in high school, and I went to high school in Montgomery, Alabama at the height of the Civil Rights Movement for half of my high school. And the other half, I was in Bangkok, Thailand during the height of the Vietnam War. And so those two events in my life have greatly influenced the kind of training that I want to be a part of. As you know, training is a billion, billion, billion dollar industry. You can do all kinds of training. The training that, that grabs me, um, is the training that I do on this campus. Uh, and the other influence I'll, I'll say is that, I don't know why I did this, but I kind of grew up saying yes to things. So even if I didn't, that's a southern. Is that what that is? <laughs> oh, I never thought of that. That is true, you don't say no. Like, how are you doing? Fine. Yeah. I'm fine, how are you? Um, so I, I kind of fell into the 
this work by saying yes to things. And um, I had a lot of practitioner work by saying yes to things. Um, things that I wasn't necessarily qualified for, but sure, I'll do it. <laughs> and I think that that's how I built up my, my experience. And it served me really, really well. And I know some of you um, do the same thing and, ha and have done the same thing. So I think the saying yes is something that I want to uh, talk about a little bit today. Um, my definition of training stems from um, the writers of a book, uh, Park and Linton, who talk about training is not just about knowing more, it's about behaving differently. So when I think of that, I think of who I want, who I'm trying to be in the world. Who I want to be in the world. That behaving differently is really um, attitudinal. It isn't just about knowledge, although it is. And it's skill-based, and it's awareness-based, and it's language-based, and it's all those things. I think the, the big thing for me is what kind of trainer do I want to be? And for, for those of you who are interested in training, what kind of trainer do you want to be? Um, I feel like I have the, the this is going to sound funny coming from me. I think um, I have kind of the dream job um, at SIT because um, I always wanted, because I've never had any roots, I always wanted to have roots. And so I have a family, I have a mortgage, I have a home that we built, um, I have animals, we have, we have that life. Um, I've been lucky enough to work in a field that I love. I like getting out of bed in the morning and talking about training and engaging with people in, in that. I get to talk about my practice and what it's taught me and how it might um, influence um, your own thinking. And um, I get to drive the back way to this campus where I don't pass another car. And it's just beautiful meadows and Trees, and then I come early out. I'd like to have class at six instead of, you know, I'd, the earlier the better. Um, you know, if the sun's coming up, it's beautiful. I just really am lucky. And to drive up on this campus and think, wow, okay, I'll work here. Um, and, and that has some importance to what I want to say today as well. Um, my biggest learning in training, probably, it, it, since Alex asked me to talk about movement and training, one of the, the biggest things I have learned is that I'm part of the problem, not the answer. And I think that I have grown into that the older I've gotten. When I started training, I really worked hard to get at that truth and work with that truth and, and, and whether it was in my southern way, convincing or, or trying to get people to think the way I did about something or whatever. And I've really grown away from that um, because the, the more I'm in this work, the more I see that I am so much part of the problem uh, in this work. And that there's not one truth, of course. I mean, there's so many truths. And the challenge in training, for me, is to get the diversity of truths in the room. And I think that's the hardest thing to do. I think that that is so difficult on so many levels. And um, that's been a, a huge journey for me. And it's been a slow one. I think of training as a lifelong kind of process. A, a, a it's a process, it's a profession. And um, it's, it's taken me a long time. It might not take you so long. Um, I also have learned that um, we can't wait to act. That I'm never going to get it how I want to get it before I act. And I hear that from people. I hear, well, let me, you know, let me get it right when I get off this hill, and then when I get into the real world, then I'll, I'll work with this stuff. And I want to say, no, 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 no. This is the real world right here. The same issues that are out there, if we let them and encourage them to come into the room, they're here. And uh, our challenge is that we think we're like-minded because we're up on this hill. And we have commonalities, but we have a lot of differences that would be great for us to actually 
dump right in the room and work with. And I think that's the, the power of training. Um, I also have learned that I want social justice and culture work to be at the heart of any training I do, regardless of what it is. Whether it's strategic planning, which I don't like doing, in an organization, or whether it's, um, whether it's really direct culture work in a, in a refugee camp. Um, I want social justice to be at the heart of my work. Um, Thich Nhat Hanh talks about the concept of inter-R, which I'm sure that many of you are familiar with. And what I have taken from that might not exactly be what he meant by it, but what I've, what I've learned from it, when he talks about the garbage in the rose, um, he talks about our uh, needing both of them. And I can tell you, I'm, I'm full of compost. <laughs> and when I think of the impact of you know how compost really makes for a beautiful rose, and in the cycle how the rose makes for compost, which makes for the rose, to me, in a way, that that's the potential of training. That's what we have the potential to do in in a training situation, in a co-created learning situation. And um, my guess is that we're all a mix of, we've got our compost, and we've got our roads. Um, and I think Tidnan Khan talks about uh, how to accept and use our experiences. And he's not just talking about my experience in the training room, he's talking about all our experiences. And he's not just talking about experiences that reflect success. He's talking about experiences that reflect garbage. And I think that um, his challenge of how do we accept and work with that is a challenge that I also um, believe strongly in in the context of training. He also talks about how to transform what's in the room. And I think that's part of the job of, of helping to facilitate a process where people are, are actually not just willing to look at this stuff, but actually want to look at this stuff. And um, I'm really excited to be engaged in it um, every day. So for me, uh, his garbage in the rose really sums it up. Um, I can't wait until I am just the rose, because that will never happen, and I'll never work. I'll never take action. Um, so the, the moment is now. Um, when Alex asked me to talk about the tenets of training, naturally a few things come up. I've already mentioned some of them in here. I believe that people have their own answers, and I didn't always believe that. I believed I had the answer, and if I could figure out the way to get that answer across, people would get it. That's, that's so not right. Um, and I, I really feel that people do have their own answers, and the question is, if I really believe that, what does that mean? I mean, if, I, if you really believe people have their own answers, what would that mean in your life? That's huge. So it's much easier to think I have the answers. Because then I don't have to do all the stuff necessary if, it's a, if I think of collective transformation with things, um, which is much harder. So I think that is one of the tenets of training that I, I feel is very social justice based and that I, I like to try and take with me. Um, the challenge is to get out of the way. The challenge is to get out of the way so that people can engage with their experience and their truths. Um, and I think that the, the last one is probably one of the hardest things uh, for me is, I don't know if it is for you, but is to accept the contradictions in myself. Because I am so full of both of these things. And the contradictions are really hard when, you, when you're trying to work um, for social justice. Because sometimes things come out of my mouth that I still can't believe come out of my mouth. <laughs> and um, that's the reality of it. That, that's me. And so I, I feel like that accepting of that contradiction and helping others to accept the contradictions in themselves are a big part of what I am doing. Um, I think if I were to 
uh, name a call to action, especially for people who are uh, working on this campus and studying on this campus. It would be that um, to to really embrace the notion that we're all teachers, we're all we're all learners, um, and that this is in fact, if we're willing to put our experience in the room and the diversity of our experience, um, that this is the real world, right here. It's a pretty place, but we can choose to in, use it as a practice center and really, really take the risks and make the mistakes and say the things that help us to, to work with issues or not. And my call to action would be to say yes to that and to, God, sounds like Nancy Reagan, just say no. <laughs> say yes to that. Um, and uh, to, to really um, take advantage of this opportunity. So in closing, um, I'd like to read a, a poem by Thich Nhat Hanh, um, if I may. I, I have no idea if I'm over time. Keep going. Doing great. <laughs> okay. Um, and this poem is called uh, Please Call Me By My True Names. And uh, when he was asked about this poem, he said, I have many names, and when you call me by any one of them, I have to say yes. And to me, this speaks of the complexities and contradictions and everything that all of us bring to, to a learning environment especially one that we hope to collectively transform. So this is an extract from the poem. Do not say that I'll depart tomorrow, because even today I still arrive. Look deeply. I arrive in every second to be a bird on a spring branch. I'm the mayfly, metamorphosing on the surface of the river. And I'm the bird which, when spring comes, arrives in time to eat the mayfly. I'm the 12-year-old girl refugee on a small boat who throws herself into the ocean after being raped by a sea pirate. And I am a pirate, my heart not yet capable of seeing and loving. My joy is like spring, so warm it makes flowers bloom. My pain is like a river of tears, so full it fills up the four oceans. Please call me by my true names, so I can wake up, and so the door of my heart can, can be left open, the door of compassion. Thank you.